victories. They go into day four needing another 173 to reach their victory target of 225. Captain Mike Atherton and Alex Stewart saw them through to the close with an unbeaten opening partnership of 52. And earlier, Angus Fraser and Dean Headley both took four wickets as the West Indies were bowled out for 210 second time around. England knew they needed a good start. Kenny Benjamin's wicket got them going in the right direction. But Brian Lara was the one they were after. Looking for his first home test century. He didn't make it to his 50. Angus Fraser made sure of that. And when Dean Headley followed up with the West Indies vice-captain, Carl Hooper, England were back in the match. Shivnarin Chandapal put it back in the balance. But that was before Headley weighed in with his hot streak. Chanda Paul, David Williams, and Kirtley Ambrose went in seven balls. England were on the up before Jimmy Adams pinned them down again. His knock of 53 could prove to be a winner in the third test. He stood his ground as others fell about him. And by the time England got their prize, the damage had already been done. The target was 225 for victory. And England warmed to the task immediately. Mike Atherton and Alex Stewart had nearly two hours left to play. But for once, England didn't have to call on the night watchman. Ollie Foster, Sky News. They need another 38 runs on the final day for victory with six wickets standing. Graham Thorpe and Mark Butcher, the men England are going to rely on. They took England to 187 for four at the close after a stormy final session. It always promised to be a day to test the nerves. Mike Atherton had hearts in mouths early on when he gave this sharp chance to Stuart Williams off Courtney Walsh when on 39. But with that scare out of the way, he and his partner Alex Stewart shared the highest stand of the match with hardly a full stroke. Stewart especially in sublime form. Then, just when it seemed nothing could stop England's opening pair, Trinidad produced something out of the blue. Rain. With the score on 122, the players were forced to take an early lunch. But once the rain relented, England were faced with a storm of a different kind. They lost Atherton one short of his half century, Walsh finally getting his man. And with England 80 runs from victory, a kind of dismissal which has so often scuppered their chances in the past. John Crawley needlessly run out going for a second run, failing to get his bat down in time. It was just the encouragement the home side needed, and with their tails up, they soon had another victim. The priceless one of Stewart, caught behind off Walsh, having just been dropped by Hooper in the same over. That brought Graham Thorpe and Nasser Hussain together, and between them, the pair set about regaining the initiative. But just before the interval, the original ball from hell. The pitchers had varied bounce from the start, but this one from Hooper hardly bounced at all. After further stops for rain, there was just time for Thorpe and Mark Butcher to reduce the target to a tantalising 38, leaving England on the brink of a famous victory. Charlie Thomas, Sky News. Indies never gave up the game lightly, and after a delay for rain, Ambrose made sure that England's raw nerves were all but shredded. Three times he removed batsmen from the scene, and as England edged the ball, so the West Indies edged at one stage to close to an improbable victory. But Butcher held firm, his 24 not out, vital after the earlier good work yesterday from Atherton and from Stewart. And England were home, levelling the series at one all after a three-wicket win, 225 for seven. It really was a great test match. It was all about focus. 40 minutes of rain did nothing for the nerves in Port of Spain. 38 runs required for England with six wickets left. And the weather seemed the West Indies' only hope. But it let them down. Surrey's Graham Thorpe and Mark Butcher strode out in the sunshine to finish off the job, knowing that the West Indies would certainly make them work. Their only boundary, four leg buys. But when the 200 came up, the Barmy Army were banking on an early lunch. They lost their appetite two minutes later. Graham Thorpe out for 19. It's never dull with Jack Russell in the middle. Stuart Williams appealed for the catch. 
had owned up that it had bounced first. The end was close for Russell. The gloves were off. Predictably, the knockout punch came from Ambrose. Hooper took the catch with England 12 runs short of victory. Andy Caddick's contribution lasted one ball. Ambrose never achieved the hat-trick, but England were just happy to make it to lunch and regroup. It worked as well. Dean Headley showed composure beyond the call of a tail-ender. The winning run, a bye off Ambrose's delivery. And England had levelled the series. Ollie Foster, Sky News. It was probably the most tense game that I think I've played in. We played in one or two, but you know it was a small target today, but the way the West Indies bowl, they made us work hard for every run. It's difficult with such an exciting finish to look back over the whole game, but uh, once again, a fantastic performance by Angus Fraser. Yeah, I, th I think after lunch on the first day was a critical spell when he got three wickets for us, uh, but I thought the way our seam was bowled on the, on the fourth morning, third morning, um, when we kept, we kept in the game really, we had to throw all our eggs in one basket. Dean Headley bowled, you know, for two hours non-stop from the bottom end and I thought that really kept us in the match. And a great effort by yourself and Alex Stewart at the start of the innings to uh, build the foundation. Yeah, Stewie's been in magnificent form all trip. Uh, obviously, the 100 run start, you know, got us on our way, so we were quite pleased. And what about Mark Butcher? Another 11th hour appointment for him. I mean, uh, if uh, Adam Holyoke had been fit, he wouldn't have even been playing in the match. Well, it's been a difficult tour having no, no cricket and just playing in the odd you know, test match here and there. But he showed great, great character and great courage today to see the...